Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to fix SQL injections in uh, web applications written in JavaScript. So I just brought a web page up here which uh, contains an article entitled Hackers Sentenced for SQL Injections That Cost $300 Million. So the article is from the 19th of February 2018 and it basically describes how Russian hackers were able to um, inject SQL queries into um, the website or the systems of um, the Heartland payment systems, right? And this led to convictions. This edition is from 2017 and they have a top 10 of uh, web uh, application vulnerabilities and you can see the top vulnerability is uh, injection which includes SQL injection so it's quite a prevalent and serious vulnerability and today we're gonna um, use the OWASP juice shop which I have um, which I have cloned locally here um, it basically is uh, free and open source on GitHub, and if you want to run it locally, you just uh, use npm run serve, and it's gonna start up um, the application. It indicates first that it's running on port 3000, but um, after a few seconds, it switches to 4200 right so it's compiled successfully it's running on port 4200 I'm gonna go here localhost 1200 right and it's gonna load up the juice shop which is a web application riddled with uh, vulnerabilities written in JavaScript uh, meant for training purposes and it's also being developed by the same OWASP, which uh, I showed you the top 10 a few seconds ago. So this application is basically a web shop um, where you have different challenges for different types of vulnerabilities. And to see which uh, challenges we have, you can look here at the scoreboard. And I know that on uh, the second level of challenges, there's um, an injection, an SQL injection challenge, which says you should log in with the administrator user account, and this should be done via injection. So you can go here to account login, and then if you use a very simple trick from SQL injection, something that looks like uh, some string, you close a quote, which is probably inside of the code uh, of the web application, and then you do or one equals one, which is always going to be true, and then you, you comment out with a double uh, minus, you comment out the rest of the SQL statement. This is basically going to return true all the time. It's gonna return the first user, who's probably going to be the admin user, and then in order to be able to uh, click this login button because it's basically it's grayed out if no, no text is here I just need to input some bogus password so now if I log in okay I'm logged in right and if I go to the administration page boom you can see I'm logged in as the admin of this um, web shop right so this is the vulnerability you saw just by entering a string in the uh, login page I was able to uh, get admin privileges right so this should not happen um, all right so if we go back to the login page we look here we need to look for this inside of the code so I'm gonna I'm gonna go here in the code um, and I'm gonna look for um, login right so looking for login I found the login component here 
and this is a form which looks similar to um, the form inside of this web page, right? There's a login, there's an email account, there's a password, right? So this is this is it. And basically I need to look for where uh, this form is being processed. So it's basically this login button. And if I log in, it's not there, but just looking for the button here. Okay, login button, right? And on click, it's gonna call this login function. So I'm gonna copy login and there's a bunch of function calls here. There's this test. Okay, there's this login component here. Okay, so here's our function, login. Okay, cool. Um, we see that it basically initializes a couple of local attributes of this uh, class called login component using email control value, password control value, right? <clears throat> and these uh, email control value and password control value are taken from the form, right? So we need to sanitize these. And more importantly, we need to see where the query is being formed. So we need to look into this uh, login function where exactly the actual login is being performed. We see that there is a login function which is called again. If you go to the definition of that function, okay. All right, we see that there's actually a post command which contains the login and the parameters. And if we go, if we search for, we notice here there's a login um, command, which is search again for login. And we should find something like login.js. This looks good. In routes. Okay. So this is probably what is being called um, by that post request. And we can see here there's a request, right? And there's a return, a response, which includes an SQL query, where we see that there's an email and the hash of a password, which is exactly what we would expect there to be, right? Inside of a um, vulnerable web application, right? So the problem here is that these two values, the email and the uh, hash of the password are simply concatenated here to uh, the SQL query instead of using a parameterized query, right? If we look at what is being used here, it's called SQLize. Right, models SQLize. So if we go to the definition of that, it's in this file and it requires SQLize. So this is basically an NPM package. All right, so we go to that NPM package. SQLize, SQLize. We open SQLize. And we see that it has an API. Inside of the API, here we see that there is a new SQLize object being created. So we go to that SQLize object and we look for query. We see that the query accepts a string and an object. Right, and this is something that is similar to what we see in our web application, right? Now, um, one thing which uh, I know uh, is true is that this 
SQLize has different options, right? And one option which is interesting for us is called bind because it lets you bind a parameter using this kind of format. And this is exactly what you need for a parameterized query. So what we need here is to go back to where that query is formed. So here, and to make it a parameterized query. So to do that, I'm just going to first take out the email into its own variable. And I'm going to take the password into its own variable. And instead of this sum here, so we're going to do the bind parameters as indicated here. So we're going to have an array, right? We're going to have an array of the objects, um, email and password. And we're going to say that the uh, type of this query is select. So we're going to say models dot sequelize dot right. So let's just make this look a bit better here. So it fits in one screen. Okay. So now it looks good. So now we have a parameterized query with uh, two parameters, one and two. The first one is email, the second one is password. Cool, so let's compile this. I'm gonna stop this and restart it so that it compiles properly. It's gonna take a second here. First says that it's running on this port and then um, it's actually and then the other one. And now it's reloading. Okay. So juice shop is here. And now if we try the same trick with one or yeah, one equals one double and then some bogus password. Doesn't work anymore. See, so even if I try this doesn't work. And just to show you that I'm not kidding, um, if we try a legit registration of a user with some password, some security question, doesn't matter. Now I can, you see the registration completed, now, now I can log in. So log in to usergmail.com with that password. And this actually works. But if I log out and then try to log in with that SQL injection, so the one that we tried at the beginning of this video, doesn't work. Uh, so it, this is the magic of parameterized queries. It's super easy and as that article in the beginning that I showed in the beginning said, you can kill SQL injections stone dead by just using these parameterized database queries and doing it consistently. So now we've just done it in uh, this form for these two fields, but you can uh, apply it everywhere, basically. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and please let me know um, how and uh, what I can improve. And also please let me know in the comments what other vulnerabilities you would like me to show you how to fix. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.